Hello, good morning. Welcome on Quasar Training Part 1. This is a 2020 update on Quasar Training. Um, it's mostly to keep um, or present updates on what was what changed since uh, this training was last uh, time done, which was, I think, four years ago. Uh, so we have new versions um, of components of Quasar itself, uh, of OPCUA um, libraries, uh, stuff like that. Um, so it's good to refresh these contents for you to make um, an easy process to start using Quasar. And this is the Linux version of this training. I hope one day we'll have a Windows version. There will be um, a lot of common between both versions, uh, but specific things like building on Linux is um, in this tutorial. Um, also, I plan to uh, say a bit more on um, how to build on embedded Linux platforms, including Pet Petal Linux and maybe Yocto one day. Um, so that all will be addressed by the Linux version of this training. So let's uh, get started. Um, it's just a few points. Uh, this uh, first version of this training is basically um, how to get started in the sense of environment, of creating Quasar projects, um, building a very basic uh, OPCUA server using Quasar, and then uh, how to start it. Um, so, um, I'll be using um, a temporary directory um, in my home directory for all of this. Uh, all of uh, examples here so this will also help me to make sure that um, we, we we use the same thing from from scratch basically um, so let's um, let's prepare this uh, temporary directory all right and um, the second assumption I'm taking here is that you um, installed all dependencies that we asked to, to install so the least you can find in in, in this file on github or you can you will be actually cloning this repo so in the next step you can actually clone it as well as step one and open the file to check if you have all dependencies um, so let's now go to um, to how to obtain quasar so quasar is on github and now I'll clone this repo in version 1.3.11 and its dependent components. So that's why uh, we ask to use recursive here. Okay, so now we have, uh, now we have Quasar um, on its own. Um, this is Quasar itself, right? And then to uh, then Quasar based OPCUA servers are separate projects, the projects which um, are created from Quasar. Okay, which means um, what I cloned is not my OPC UA uh, server project, but I will create one right now. So um, from what I cloned, I do create project. I do create project in some in a directory called OPC UA dash server. So Quasar Pi create project and OPC UA dash dash server. So Quasar copies um, all, the, all the files it considers necessary for a new OPC UA server project to that directory. And uh, so let's go into that directory. Voila, this is, those are the files that were copied by Quasar. And um, I'd like to, um, and also we recommend that this is the stage at which you create a new um, Git repository for your project whenever you create a new uh, OPC UA server project. Okay. Um, so now I have my new OPC UA server project that I created using uh, Quasar, which is now versioned which means that I could go to the next step, which is how do I actually build this um, project to get an executable of an OPC UA server. Um, so here, a small remark, uh, Quasar can work with a number of uh, different OPC UA um, software components. Um, 
that means libraries that um, that are like protocol stacks that give you the connectivity itself. Um, so in this tutorial or in this training, um, I'm, I, I will use only free and open source components for OPC UA. They might have a bit less features from time to time, but on the other hand, it will keep everybody able to, to follow this tutorial and evaluate Quasar and um, learn something. So uh, here, here I will use uh, Open 62541 library, which is a provider library of uh, OPC UA. Um, this library itself uh, requires an adapter library called Open 62541 Compat. Um, it's not really important because you can, in Quasar, you can get all uh, sorted out in like two steps or three steps. So it's all really simple. So first thing I'm about to do is I will enable this compat library for Quasar, which is uh, Quasar Pi uh, enable module open 62541 compat. And then I uh, say which version I want and the, the state of the art version as of this uh, as of today is one oppa one to zero okay and then um, to build the quasar itself I need a file called build config which basically is a CMake file with a couple of settings which tell CMake uh, how to build um, this quasar server and when you clone Quasar itself, this file, the default file, default build config file for Open62501 is embedded in the Quasar repo. So I will just copy this file. So the place I cloned Quasar before was TMP Quasar Open62501 uh, underscore config. So copying to my current directory. And now I say, I will ask Quasar to uh, to use this file when building. Voila. Um, which means we could probably try to build the server. Um, in the basic usage mode, uh, which users use about 90% of cases, is, is that you build Quasar using Quasar build system, which is a very uh, thin layer on top of CMake, and you basically do Quasar Pi build. So that works on Linux, that works on Windows, on a couple of embedded um, Linux um, applications. While it's building, um, it's, it's a common that there are a few cases where you don't uh, build uh, Quasar using uh, Quasar build, um, but it's maybe slightly. Uh, less relevant at the stage because those, those are sp uh, specialized cases where you build Quasar as a shared object or um, for Yocto or for Peta Linux. But this, those all points will be addressed uh, much later. All right, um, so Quasar just got built, so we got um, the executable. So let's now try to, to run it. Um, so, there is a directory called build. Um, this is the, the binary directory in the, in the sense of CMake builds, um, where all um, artifacts of building are stored. And then inside build, um, so inside build slash bin, um, by default, you will find your executable, which we now uh, can start. So let's do that. Um, and the message which you want to see is, is that one over here, that the TCP network layer is listening on OPC TCP, um, blah, blah, blah. And basically that thing, OPC TCP, is your endpoint, is OPC UA endpoint uh, where your server is listening on. Uh, so what we can do now is uh, let's try to connect uh, to it using, uh, for instance, UA Expert, which we strongly um, recommend to you to use uh, as a, one of the basic tools for OPC UA developments. Um, so I copy, um, I copy this endpoint address to, to the clipboard. I start UA Expert, 
and then I click on plus to add a server and I just skip discovery for the moment I just directly to the endpoint and what I do here is I simply paste um, what was given to me by the running server um, voila okay so the server was added to my list of servers now I will connect to the server and that seems to be successful um, so um, here we have the information on connected yes connection status changed to connected and now we also see in the other space we we see uh, the other space of the server um, now maybe skipping skipping um, on what the other space actually is at the stage but maybe just um, pointing your attention that we see um, two objects under the the objects folder uh, one of them is server and this is a part of OPCUA standard this is standardized inside you'll find a lot of information provided by um, by OPCUA protocol stack or development kit um, which is diagnostics and metadata um, of the of the protocol itself and the stack itself and then we have another one which is standard metadata and that actually is uh, is, is brought in by Quasar uh, so here you find um, things which are common to all Quasar built uh, or Quasar based uh, OPCA servers is like a bit of metadata but also logging level, log levels uh, Quasar version for instance here you can say here you can see that is 1.3.11 so the one we cloned from uh, github etc etc voila so um thank you for your attention uh, that was the part one of the updated 2020 quasar training um thank you